Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.
Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to trim off the excess. Uh, I don't need it. Uh, no point in having it there. It'll help it give you a line too to go to. Yeah. Pay no attention to the scribble. <laughs> Everything's a notepad in the shop. Yes, it is. I'm surprised you don't got something here. A couple uh, more. I just put that top on yesterday. <laughs> okay, so we've got our base template. Okay, so uh, being that this, we want to make sure that it's symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Do it my yep. Mark your center line. Uh, yeah. This one will Pull the heat. It's probably in your hand. Like I'll probably take it underneath there. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me... Yeah. Uh, we're going to find center uh, of this panel. Surfaces. Very hard to find. This, yeah, it's really hard to find center. And uh, I got this from a pinstriper. Uh, Matt. Okay, yeah. Real good friend of mine. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Fantastic people. I never used to say this thing twice. <laughs> so, this is going to give us a really, really nice. Uh, center point. Perfect. So uh, from there what we'll do is everything or all the artwork that we're going to create, I like to do it symmetrical. I used to do asymmetrical stuff but it's really hard for people to find an agreement with it. They, people just have an issue with uh, things being heavier to one side than the other. So I'm going to do just a basic grid and the grid is just for orientation for me to be able to locate where I want the art and kind of scale it. That way I know I'm not getting too far out of, mm -hmm. you know, out of, uh, out of the footprint that I actually want to use. So this will just be super simple. So this is where, um, uh, styling wise, this is where you and I really get to shine a lot. So I'm going to throw down some lines cool. and uh, a lot of the times I used to draw everything out. Now I actually do, um, I pull all my lines with pinstripe tape mm -hmm. because I can get a true line. I can get a real representation of what that line flows like and I can change it up. Now, once I have that representation, I'm going to remove it and we'll take it over to digitize it. Awesome. So, I'm curious, man. I want to see this thing. Me too. <laughs> okay, see so what comes out of that crazy amount of yours. All right, so all these lines, parallel lines, show me how far I am from the bend. Uh, back seat goes here. This is the center of the rear deck. So my speaker is located in an area. The speaker, I want to make sure that it mounts to the body of the car, sealed. It's got a nice baffle. Um, the grill is going to be more for aesthetics. It's uh, just to make it look cool. So let me see, uh, let me see what I can come up with. And I can draw most of these shapes bending a straight edge, but... For a smooth transition on the curves, that's really cool. Yeah. So that's a really, really good size 
ring. I'm just rolling this to make sure it doesn't pop up whenever I start okay. activating a bit more stuff. So usually from here I just get a concept or an idea of what I want my interior ring. So this space that I've got, that I've got taped off, is the actual female shape that's going to be in the deck. And then I'm doing the interior cutout or the missing space for the ring and the press, gear, the press grill and whatever else. So what I would probably want to do is, is pocket cutting this, stepping it down so I've got a nice little flange and I could do like a logo, a brand or whatever, or even do this as a recess in it to where I can do his, um, I believe it's called uh, Novocaine is what his car is called, oh, cool. I think, or I might be remembering something from somewhere else, from somebody else's mind. No, or Either way. Was a or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so all I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to trace this so it stands out a little bit more to me and makes more sense to me. And that gives you a defined line that, yeah, just like you said, more crisp. Right. I can I can get a really solid visual of what it is that is happening. That's a really cool process, man. See, I'm, I'm always just drawing it trying to erase and throw it away and start over. <laughs> I might have to start using this tape trick. This is cool. Well, it's uh, it keeps me from having to, uh, you know, again. Start over again. Yeah, you, you don't have to restart, but you know, sometimes we'll wind up having five or six or 10 lines. You're going, oh man. Which one do I cut? Yeah. Which one looked the best, <laughs> yeah. It helps if while you're tracing it, you shake the pen just subtly. <laughs> just really just Helps keep it nice. Out. Yeah. So, same thing with the outside. I'm using the thickness of the tape to help guide the ballpoint. Yeah, kind of just like a, like a flush trim on a router bit. We kind of did. Yeah. So, it's a. Uh, that tape will help you keep a nice little line on it. It's usually easier if you're pulling a line to yourself. Oh yeah, imagine trying to push away. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> all over the place. It's really hard. Pinstripe is hilarious. Pinstripe in the other way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got a definitive shape here. So from here, I decide what do I want to do with that. Mm -hmm. You know, do I want to do another ring? Do I want to do a, 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 a aluminum bezel? Am I just doing a press grill? So I've got my female shape, no big deal. The only thing I need is this interior footprint right here. Mm -hmm. Is this male shape with this female cut out of it, and then I can take it to digitize it. Okay, so um, from here, uh, a couple of things. Um, I need to cut my template as smooth as possible. Mm -hmm. What I'm using now is I'm going to use the tape and the ink line. this thing right here? Uh, this is a digitizing tablet made by Logic Trace. Awesome. Uh, what this does, it was originally designed for topography mapping mm -hmm. and uh, over the years people have found a different use for it. Uh, guys like Gary Bell, Jeremy Carlson, Dave Voss, they're using this to digitize patterns and templates to be able to do more things. Uh, but it helps keep your art organic. Um, one of the issues that I found was uh, doing uh, CAD, mm -hmm. for example, that's you've got to already be geared for CAD. You've got to really, really want to learn it and understand it. But, uh -huh. but uh, <laughs> uh, my attention span, yeah. and uh, you know, I can draw certain things that I can really put down with a pen mm -hmm. and, and or or pinstripe tape. I just don't know how to land those in CAD. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot of people that can. I'm not saying it's not possible, but. I've always had an issue handing my art to somebody and have them draw it on CAD because it never comes back like mine. Exactly. So this right here is a conduit for me to step into digital production. Um, 
I love what it does. There's actually a grid underneath here uh -huh. that will map my styles. So I can take any template, any, any, any format that I've got and trace it and it logs the footprint and it creates a DXF file. Now the DXF file, Barbara can import it into our VCarve Pro uh -huh. and she'll do a tool path and we're cutting. It's, it's, uh, it simplifies my lack of knowledge with CAD. Uh, perfect. It's perfect for guys like me and I'm sure a lot of other guys out there, man. Yeah, it, it, it's a great tool and like I said, I mean, I, I don't know when I'll ever have time to sit still for, uh, some people say you can learn CAD in two days. Yeah. I'm not that guy. Yeah. Uh, it might take me six months of sitting, sitting in a single room locked in for me to figure it out and then I still won't be able to draw as good as I can normally. So. With that being said, we're going to apply some tape to the back of this so I can position it. Okay. Um, this black surface here is a, a self-healing mat. I only have it for the grid. Okay. Because that way I've got a reference of measure and also where to uh, where to locate my part. On this screen, this entire screen represents the entire tablet. Okay. What I can do is I can take and shrink the tablet down to encompass the full screen of this. So okay. that way we'll get a better look at it. So okay. let me pull this tape off of here and um, we'll attach it. I'm gonna locate it to a flat plane here. Make sure it's attached. What I didn't show you is I actually sanded the edges of my cut with 220 um, just to get a little bit smoother because the stylus rides on the edge and it'll actually read everything. So. Um, what we were explaining earlier was this screen represents the entire tablet. It's 44 by 60, and uh, the 44 by 60 we're not using. We're only using about, you know, what is that, 15 inches, 16 inches by 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this screen, shrink this thing down to where 44 by, uh, I'm sorry, 16 by 12 will be represented on this entire piece. It's asking me to, to locate four points. so. Luckily, I went ahead and put a good sweat on the board. So I'm gonna start at six and a half. We're gonna put a point there. It's asking me for another point at the bottom. So from six and a half down to here, six and a half. And you can see we're already starting to grid. I'm gonna go over to 28. Go up, 28. Okay, and it just, encompass that area so now I can focus in on my piece. That's cool. Okay, so whenever you're doing a tweeter pot or a smaller thing, it makes a lot more sense to be able to get a tighter a tighter look on it. Aside from the fact that I've got a four inch LCD here uh -huh. versus the big shop 70 inch TV. Um, okay, so what winds up happening with this is this stylus is going to travel the entire footprint of this pattern. Okay, so what we actually did is we took this 44 by 60 tablet, uh, which normally is represented by this area on the screen, on the software. We reduced it down just to encompass the footprint that we're going to build off uh, with our template. So this area is just a little bit bigger than the area that I'm going to trace. Now, um, this is a really, really cool thing to do, but this is not a conventional stylus. This isn't a pen. Uh, the way this works, realistically, or just you know, for all intents and purposes, it's like a laser pen. The grid that's actually recording what's going on is sitting at a lower surface. So if you set your pen at an angle, you're creating a distortion of the shape. On top of that, nobody draws from a single position this way. Everybody's usually, they have movement, they move around. So every time you reorientate the back end of the pen, the focal point changes and you create a bigger obstacle. So what I normally do right now is I'll have a specific start point. Uh, I'm going to do a continuous line around the whole thing. Um, you want to have a start point because you want to end just before that start point so you don't get any overlap. That's important on CNC so you don't have open vectors. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from 15. I believe I am ready to trace. Yes. Okay, so. I'm going to start at 15, you'll hear it click, the one showed up, and you'll see it recording my movement on the screen. I'm keeping the pen as vertical as I can. I 
stop just before 15. Done. Awesome. Then it says, uh, do I want to connect the start points, uh, start and end point? Yes, I do. Man, that was awesome, dude. I really like how that worked out, and that's super cool. So right now what we're fixing to do is I just saved on the USB and I'm going to pass it over to Barbara. Uh, Barbara's going to import this onto our VCARV uh, program for cutting on the CNC. She takes care of all of the important stuff. I just do this art. She takes care of the rest and is the brains of the operation. That's awesome. Yeah, so this little thing right here has all the magic in it. Awesome. So what, what do you do now? So, so now I put it into the laptop okay. and the VCAR Pro I create a tool path. Okay. And I'm going to take it over to the CNC, mm -hmm. put the same USB into the CNC, it reads the tool path and we're cutting out off the wood. Awesome. So I guess we're going to follow you doing that. Okay, so we take the USB, put it into the laptop for the VCAR Pro. I go to create a new file. Just to see what it's going to look like before we take it to the CNC machine, I always like to preview the tool pass, see where it's going to start, make sure it's got all the tabs in there in the right place, that so we're not going over the edge of the material, and then I will save the tool pass. What it's going to look like when it cuts it out. And that shows the tool cutting the little yellow parts are the tabs where it's going to create it and hold it in place. And then that's it. And believe it or not, that was on super slow. And head to the CNC. on it we've got to remove the tabs to free up the part and or to liberate the part off the substrate um, so right now we're fixing to head over to the router and quarter inch trim and we're good to go